Hello and welcome back to Von Milhausen Plays Gothic 2! In the last episode we finished kind of going through the intro stuff and kind of exploring Zardas' tower. So now we are emerging from the tower out into the uh, real world. Um, so, we can have a look around here. It's a nice blue sky day. We've got some tree stumps here. Now I did do a tiny bit of exploring during my test recording. I got, um, I got as far as basically uh, over that ridge there's a pond with a goblin. Uh, but I did also look a bit around uh, the base of Zardas' tower, so I know there is a little bit of stuff that we want to look for around here. So, uh, we can go along here. We have to be a little bit careful because there's like a giant cliff and you do take fall damage. Uh, you really cannot fall very far before you begin to die. Um, there are times when you need to wander through kind of dense foliage like this. Uh, and I found that switching into first person mode makes this a little bit easier, makes it a little bit... Um, you don't have to battle with the camera as much to see if you're about to walk off a cliff or something. Uh, it's not perfect, but there's some healing plants around here that we can pick up. Uh, and there's one there that I missed. Yoink! And if we keep going around the tower, I don't know if we can get around the tower from this side of things. Uh, there might be a full-on cliff here. Uh, maybe if we're careful... No, we can't get around that way. Uh, but we can see uh, off in the distance there's like a flag over there. I don't know if that's maybe the the city that we're trying to get to. You can see there's also like a kind of a cliff down there with a bit of a fence. And there's like a cliff over there. Uh, I'm going to try my best not to fall off here. Okay, switch back into third person. Hmm, hearing some animal noises. So if we uh, climb up here with our jumping abilities, or at least I was able to do this during my test recording. Hopefully I'll be able to do it now. There we go. We can kind of clamber up this cliff and make our way behind Zardas's tower. Then lurking down here, we have a skeleton. Now you can see these uh, scrolls here. Any magical items in the game kind of have this apparently the shimmering effect. So you may have seen this effect on like potions and stuff before. Uh, in fact, we're seeing it on a potion now, but it also shows on scrolls. So if you see sparkles, it means a magical item. Uh, I don't think there's a way to know exactly what scroll you just picked up, but I'm guessing given that fireball has three that at least one of the things we just picked up there was a fireball scroll. Uh, now, I'm not sure if there's anything else around here. You can see more of what's down this cliff. And it looks like the forest floor is down there quite a quite a distance. Uh, is there anything lurking under these trees? Let's go into first person and see if we can spot anything. Hopefully not walk off the cliff edge. Sounds like somebody's drowning. Hmm. There does appear to be a sealed cave here. The drowning noise is coming from the cave. Hmm. Wonder if maybe we'll get that cave opened at a later date. Not sure about that. So that was it for Zardas's tower. As far as I know, there's nothing else. You can kind of climb up on the uh, arch over the entranceway, but there's nothing there. And I fell off it during my test recording and died. As I say, you really cannot fall very far in this game without incurring falling damage. So I'm just looking to see if there's any more healing herbs or plants hidden in the grasses. They like uh, hiding things in this game. Aha, see? Digger meat. Lurking behind these bushes. I have no idea what digger meat is, but I'm assuming I can cook it or something. And in fact, it might be worthwhile going back into Zardas' tower and using his stove. To let us move on here a bit. We see our first creature of the world, a harmless sheep wandering around. Um... Sheep apparently are very prized in this world, and if you do 
anything to harm a farmer's sheep. Apparently, everyone and their mothers will begin to loathe you. Ooh, gin. And a dagger. Now, I'm going to save uh, LP2. Thank you. Because just over here, beyond these grasses, is our first real combat. Don't worry, sheep, it's not you. Uh, it is a goblin. I'm assuming he's going to be in the same place. Yeah, you can see him just down there through the grasses. He's kind of making those weird scroggly noises. Sheep, I wouldn't get involved. Okay, he's charging us now. No, I'm locked onto the sheep. There we go. I managed to kill the goblin and I didn't take any damage. Um, something I can show you here. There's another critter just over this edge. There's a wolf. Uh, you can see him kind of walking around there. Uh, creatures, wild animals particularly, will usually give you a warning sign when you're starting to annoy them. So if I get close to this wolf, he'll start to like growl at us a bit. Uh, hang on, not just yet. And it's, wow, the game's getting really choppy. Not sure what that's about. Uh, hang on, let me see if I can sort out this choppiness. Okay, I saved my game and loaded again. The choppiness seems to have gone away. Not sure what that's about. But you can see the, the wolf is around here, uh, prowling around. If I get close to him... There you go. He's starting to, like, bark and gnash his teeth at me. If I walk away, he won't turn aggressive. He'll leave me alone. And apparently most creatures in the game will do something like that. They'll give you, like, an indication, like, Hey, buddy, back off. And it's only if you stay and don't back off that they'll actually turn violent and charge you like the goblin did. So speaking of the goblin, let me get out of cob uh, combat mode. He had another heavy branch and we can search his corpse as well. So we had a second heavy branch on him and he also had a fish, which is nice. So he was down here uh, guarding uh, this pond. Uh, and you can see this pond has a wooden jetty on it which leads into a cave. I have not explored that cave. This is as far as I got during my test recording but I do know there is some stuff hidden around the edge here. I can see these healing plants and we I think we want to get as many of those as we can. Uh, what's that? A healing root. Let's switch into first person as we go through these bushes. Let's make sure we don't miss anything. Ooh, look! It's another skeleton. Ooh, and he's got arrows and a bow. So let me take all these arrows. Yoink, yoink, yoink. A short bow. I'd be kind of tempted to um, learn arrows as a, as a skill in this game. Um, bows and arrows because in Oblivion and in Skyrim... Uh, archery was always my favorite skill. I just loved being able to snipe at enemies from a distance and hide in the shadows. That is absolutely my style of gameplay. Uh, so right now I only have the uh, wooden club uh, equipped, but if I press tab, we can go over and uh, highlight our bow here and we can equip that and you'll add it on its back. So you can see the bow now has a number two beside it. It's now assigned to the uh, two weapon key. So if I come out of here and press 2, we'll ready our bow. If I press 1, uh, we'll switch to the club. And now we're back out of combat mode. Okay, so our character can swim. If I wade into water that's deep enough, he'll switch over to swimming mode. Uh, we can press control to dive underwater. There is an incredibly strong uh, swimming effect. So I can't actually really see underwater. I don't know... If the DirectX 11 patch is supposed to do that, maybe the original game was like that as well. I don't know. I haven't tried, but I'm assuming that uh, it's supposed to be like that. Uh, I don't see anything under the water looking from the surface. No, I'm not seeing anything. So I'm hoping they're not hiding anything critical underwater, but uh, let's have a look inside the cave. And just in case there are monsters, let me save the game again. Okay.
Oh, there's another goblin, and he's giving the uh, angry gesture. And he's charging. Oh. Oh, we took a little damage there. Okay, got rid of the goblin though. Uh, if we examine his corpse, he had a wooden club on him. We may as well take it. Uh, now, I don't know if it happened here, but when you, uh, yeah, you can just see there's a tiny, tiny little uh, blob of red that right there that is goblin blood, uh, or possibly human blood because I'm a little hurt. Uh, Creatures do bleed in this game, and when you get them really low on health, they will leave like a blood trail. And apparently, you can use that to like uh, track enemies that are running away from you and that kind of stuff. So, Nothing there. Uh, I emptied the goblin. I wanted to take the heavy branch because I'm planning to sell as much stuff as I can. What have we got here? This looks a little bit spidery. We got ourselves a dark mushroom. I'm assuming these are ingredients in brewing potions and stuff. More dark mushrooms here. So we can go left or right. Uh, let's save after killing that goblin. And let's go left. Oh, there's two goblins there. Uh, maybe we don't go left. I'm not sure I'm ready to take on two enemies at once. What happens if we go right? Oh, I hear more goblins. Maybe those are the two that we saw above. Got another mushroom area. Oh god, what's that? Uh, whatever it is, it's weird and pissed off. Uh, let's go into combat mode. It's charging. It's a young field raider. Oh god, I'm nearly dead. Uh, so now we can go into our inventory. And we can... Uh, let's see. I'm looking for a healing plant. I think they do... Yeah, you can see the healing plant heals 10 hit points. So if we activate one of these... You can see we've healed a chunk of health. So I'm going to eat another one and we'll just leave it at that. What did the young field raider have on him? He had nothing on him. Okay, well, it was worth some experience points at least. Uh, if we check our character sheet... Uh-oh. I think this guy might be getting annoyed at us. No. Okay. Um, we have 230 experience points, and the next level is at 500. Uh, let me just save again. TV. Uh, I'm the kind of person that also saves like a bajillion times, so don't be annoyed at me for having too many save games. It's just gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, attack me. And I died. Okay, that didn't go well. Whoa. That was a lot of blood that suddenly exploded out of that guy. So let's try this again. Okay, he's attacking. And dead again. Hmm. Maybe I'm not quite ready for the young field raiders. So let's leave that guy alone for the moment. And we can go this way. Ah, we're leading outside. And I think that's another healing plant. It is. This must be the... Um, the path to the valley that Zardus told us about. Remember he said there was a, uh, a path uh, through a hidden cave near the pond by his house uh, that would lead down to the valley and that there might be healing plants down there that would help us. But I'm assuming there's also probably going to be monsters lurking down there that would, like, not help us. I do see some more healing plants. I may as well grab these. And I'm hearing monster noises of some variety. Healing plant, healing herb, which are the more valuable and potent variety. 
Anything hidden around here? Ooh, yes. Some magical scrolls. Some potions. I wish it would tell me what they were. Um, well, I have four fireballs now. Three fire arrows, two light, three helite wounds. And in terms of potions, we have uh, five mana essence potions. So I'm guessing, guessing it was probably mana potions. Is this another healing herb? Oh, I'm seeing more spidery stuff. Healing herb, healing plant. Hmm. It's a bit misty and weird down here. Oh. It's a dude over there by a campfire. Let me save again. I'm just looking for creatures lurking here. One thing I did hear about this game is that, um, like, there are areas that are just going to be way too tough for you to go near at the start of the game and you just have to learn to avoid them. So it's not like Oblivion or anything where the world kind of levels up around you. There's a wolf over there. Oh, and there's another wolf right there. There's a wolf chasing a raccoon or something. Oh, and that guy's going after the wolf. What the hell is happening here? The raccoon or the rat or whatever is going up there. The wolf has gone away. The guy is chasing after the wolf. Uh, dude, you've got problems. One less monster around. Wow, he just one-shot that guy. Hey, Lester. Now where is he going? Wow, he's just less monster around. savaging these wolves. Is that you? Really? Man, am I glad to see you. Uh, apparently we know him from the first game, but I don't. Do do I know you? Or Lester, how did you get here? Um, hmm, I know we are supposed to have forgotten a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Do I know you? Am I supposed to know you? Hello? Anyone home? I risked my neck so you could get that weird stone. You owe me something. This time you should remember that. You still remember Diego, Milton, and Gorn? Uh, Diego, Milton, and who? Diego, Milton, and who? Don't tell me you can't remember any of that. The Focus Stones, the Troll, the Water Mage's enormous pile of ore. I'm not so sure. That'll come back. It took me a while to get my head straight, too. Um, what happened? What happened? After the Sleeper was defeated, the entire Brotherhood lost their minds. Without their master, they were all just empty husks. And you? What about you? It was the same for me. I had nightmares and even hallucinations. But once my head was more or less clear again, I ran for it. Once, I thought I saw a huge black shadow pounce on a group of fugitives and burn them all up in a giant cloud of fire. At that moment, I really thought a dragon had come to kill me. Did you see anything else? No. I took to my heels and ran. Okay, random. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll go with this top option. I'm on my way to Corinus. What do you know about the town? Corinus? Well, it's a seaport. Nothing special. Why do you ask? I must go and see the paladins who are said to be in town. <laughs> really? Uh, they won't even let you into the town. And certainly not to where the paladins are. Uh, okay. Do you have any suggestions how I could get into town? I certainly do. I worked for an old alchemist named Constantino some time ago. He has great influence in the city, and he's instructed the guards at the gate to let anyone through who can sell him rare herbs. So it's quite easy, really. You collect a large bunch of the plants that grow here all over the place, and then you pretend you're working for Constantino, and in you go. But don't collect a mix of this and that. The guards aren't all that bright, and they know nothing about alchemy. The bundle needs to look good to them if you want to get through. I think that ten specimens of the same kind of plant should do the trick. Thanks for the hint. 
That's a very specific number. Um, okay, last option. How long have you been hiding out in this valley? I don't know exactly. A week, maybe? But there's one more thing. When I came here in the evening, I took a look up on the mountain, and there were only a few trees there. And when I looked the next morning, that tower was there. I could have sworn it wasn't there before. Since then, I haven't left the valley. You mean Zardus's tower? I knew he was powerful, but creating a tower just like that. Zardus the necromancer? He lives in that tower? I don't know if I like that. Don't worry. He's the one who rescued me from the Sleeper's Temple. He's on our side. Uh, I don't think we're supposed to be telling people that Zardus exists. Um, you need to tell Zardus about the shadow. You need to tell Zardas about the shadow. It could be important. You don't think it was my imagination? You mean there really was a... Dragon, yes. You're getting into the thick of it again, am I right? I shouldn't say in the thick of it. Not yet. Well, good. If it's so important, then I'll go see him. But not now. For the moment, I'm going to rest. I'm still exhausted after the escape from the penal colony. I think you've got big plans. I'll see you later at Zardus's. Okay. Uh, by the way, you're a total badass for killing these wolves. Uh, let's take some wolf meat. And some more wolf meat. And there should be yet more wolf meat on the one up the... Uh, the slope here that he massacred in one hit. So I wonder if we can cook that now on his fire. That would be pretty cool. Can we talk to him anymore? Wait a minute. Ah. What do you know about the area? If you keep going down that way, you'll come to a farm. The city starts a little way beyond that. But be careful. There's not just wolves and rats hanging around here. There's goblins and bandits, too. Is that it? What do you know about the area? If you keep going down that way... Okay, he's repeating the same farm. thing. The city starts a little way beyond that. And I can't skip it. Careful. There's not just wolves and rats hanging around here. There's goblins and bandits, too. Okay, end of conversation. So, can I use your fire? Uh... No, it's not letting me activate it. Okay, so I guess if we want to cook stuff, we would need to go back up to uh, Zardas's tower, which I guess isn't even really visible from here. Oh, it looks like it's turning evening time as well. Um, hmm. Do I want to explore here, or... I think I will go back up to Zardas's tower and cook some of the foods and stuff that, I, uh, that I've collected. But I will do that off camera because it doesn't sound particularly interesting. Oh, wait, hang on. What's this? Fire nettle. Um, so I think I will end it here for an episode. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time on Von Milhausen Plays Gothic 2.